Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about romance books that have the childhood crush trope in them. Baby, baby. So I love romance books where there are childhood crushes and then it maybe grows to something more later on or there's a big time jump after that. I just think they're so cute. We all had childhood crushes, you know, and I feel like a lot of us have those like little childhood crushes that we wish maybe could have grown into something more when we were adults. Who knows? Maybe I'm the only one. But like, I think that's really cute. So I'm going to talk about 10 books that have the childhood crush trope in them. First we have a book that I am apparently very well known for now which is The Silent Waters by Brittany C. Cherry. If you didn't know I recommended this book on TikTok and um, it blew up <laughs> and it made this book get on the Kindle bestseller list and it was insane and it's still growing and it is crazy um, but this one is one of my favorite childhood crushes for sure. So this book kind of takes place in three different time periods. At the beginning you have when their characters are young maybe six or seven and then it grows to when they are allowed like I want to say 15 16 and then it jumps to when they're I think at least 19 or 20 um so at the beginning of the book our heroine um her dad ends up uh getting remarried and with that remarriage um she now has two step siblings and her stepbrother has this best friend who is our hero here and she has a crush on him from the first moment that he see she sees him and she swears like she even tells him she's like I'm gonna get married to you one day and he's like no ew gross girl cooties no um and so um she plans like their wedding out in the woods then she ends up witnessing something very traumatic something she should not have witnessed and from that day on she does not speak a single word and so this is just the relationship between like our hero and heroine and how it grows throughout the years and um it is beautiful it is one of the most epic romances that i've ever read i love this book so much and i just love the childhood crush aspect because you kind of get to see like physically see like them have that childhood crush on page whereas in some of these books they might just mention it um so i just loved this and i feel like this is one of the most epic childhood crushes you could ever read then i have wrong to need you by leisha rye if you haven't checked out this series yet it's the forbidden heart series please check them out they're so good um but this one is about our hero and heroine her name is sadia and his name is jack Jackson, and they knew each other as kids and they both had crushes on each other as kids and they were best friends as kids but then as they grew up and became teenagers Sadia started falling for uh, Jackson's brother um, and so she ended up marrying Jackson's brother and this is years later uh, she's now a widow and she's a single mother um, and Jackson comes back into her life and they start up a kind of forbidden relationship there's a bunch of amazing representation in here I think all of the people in this series um, are mixed race at least one of the people in the couples I love that representation in here our heroine in this year is also bisexual and you also don't get to see a lot of that representation in romance books either and so I love I just love the diversity of the this book series um, so this is just a forbidden a romance between the two of them and them kind of talking about how they liked each other way back when but why didn't Jackson ever make a move on her then I have the King's horrible bride this is a royalty romance book and this takes place in I think a for uh forbidden not a forbidden a made-up country called Capria Maximilian is the future king and I think like his country was in debt and this big inventor that lives in Capria was making something kind of like monumental and he was going to be rich from it and Maximilian kind of like made a deal with him that like he will use the money that he earns with this invention to stabilize their country and in return that inventor man wants him to marry his daughter later on in life and he's like okay cool and so our heroine in here has had a huge crush on Maximilian for years he's always been in the public eye um and no one knows like she's just a uh an inventor inventor's daughter you know like like she's not all that she doesn't no one knows who she is like she's not in the public eye and so it is years later her father has passed away and maximilian hasn't come to like basically fetch her yet and marry her yet and she's kind of like worried that he never will um but she's been liking him for years and she's in shock when he finally does reach out to her and tells her to come to the palace and live with him and stay with him and marry him and she just can't believe it. I thought this was really cute and it's a very short romance that I think a lot of people will enjoy. Then I have Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Robert. This one is very interesting in the childhood crush aspect um, because they weren't necessarily like children, they were more like adolescent age. Um, so this is a um, MMF romance. These three people, they go on vacation I think every winter. So they go to this like I think ski lodge 
if I'm not mistaken. This is Christmas time. The woman in this situation, she's already married it to one of the guys and um, the guy's best friend always tags along with them on trips and everything. And this is the romance about all of them like finally coming together because the two guys have always liked each other but they've been too like nervous to like say anything about it. And so it's about the three of them coming together. <laughs> um, this was really hot, really fun. I love Katie Robert. So this is just a blast of a time. Then I have Let It Shine by Alyssa Cole. This book takes place in 1961 and our heroine Zephronia I think she calls herself Sophie. Yeah, for short, Sophie. When she was younger, she had a huge crush on Ivan. The only issue is in that time period, they couldn't be together. Sophie is black and Ivan is white. And I believe Ivan is also Jewish. I may be wrong. Do not count me on that. It's been a while since I've read this book, but that was another forbidden aspect like weaved into there. And so this is like a, a forbidden romance between the two of them um, because like at the time period, there wasn't, all that much acceptance like at all. They grew up like playing together in their yard because I think Sophie's mom would cook for them. Um, like she was their home cook. And so she would bring Sophie along with her and her and Ivan would play together. And they grew up playing together um, until one day Ivan got beaten up by these gross little boys because he was playing with Sophie um, and were being racist. And so he took a beating for her basically. And I don't think they've seen each other since. And so it's years later and they come in contact again, like they see each other again and it starts up their relationship. And this was really heavy at points. It was cute at points, but it's also really heavy. So um, don't expect this to be just some fun, happy go lucky romance because it does deal with some serious topics. Then I have Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. This book is about Macy and Elliot and they grew up being next door neighbors. Um, she and her dad owned a summer house that, um, or a lake house that it's like summer house, lake house, whichever the one <laughs> uh, that was next door to Elliot's house and his family, like his family house. Um, and so they grew up basically every summer together, hanging out together. This is an, a friends to lovers romance. Um, this book takes place in like two different time periods that it jumps back and forth to when they were teenagers or younger kids that grew up into teenagers. And it jumps to present day when they're full blown adults and they have adults <laughs> and they haven't seen each other in years and we don't know why we're we have to figure out through the book why they're not friends anymore why they stopped talking to one another i just feel like this is a really amazing friends to lovers and i really love the childhood crush because again you get to see on page them forming that crush with one another on page then i have hefty by jessa kane this is a uh, like sister's best friend romance this is a high school romance as well so i know it's not going to be everybody's thing but this is my favorite jessa kane <laughs> It is so good. Oh wait, no, it might not be my favorite because I love king sized, but like I feel like maybe it's close second. Anyway, um, the hero and the heroine, they have always had a huge crush on each other, but it's kind of like forbidden because like that's his sister's best friend and that's her best friend's brother, you know? And so he's on the football team and he's kind of like bigger. And so he thinks that he could never score the heroine because she's like a skinny mini cheerleader. And she just has the hugest crush on him and has for years ever since she was younger, ever since her and her best friend became friends. She's always had a crush on him and like come on to him and he's never taken the hint. And then finally in this book, the dam finally like breaks and they, they get it on and it is hot and it is good. Ew. It was really good. <laughs> then I have A Beautiful Player by Christina Lauren. This is book number three, a part of the Beautiful Bastard series. This is also an age gap romance. So this is about uh, Hannah, AKA Ziggy, and what is his name? Will. Okay, so Will is actually best friends with Hannah's Ziggy. I'm gonna call her Ziggy because that's what the book says all the time. So he is best friends with Ziggy's older brother. And so when Ziggy, I think was like 10, 11, 12, her brother was in college and so it's, an age gap here um and so he would always come home with her brother to like stay over winter breaks or summer breaks or work for their family over the summer because they're really close friends and he needed a summer job and so that happened a lot when he was in college and so she just had a crush on him growing up because this this, this cute college dude <laughs> is staying at your house for the summer like who who wouldn't at like 11 years old 12 years old have a crush on this 
older boy, you know, like who wouldn't have a crush. And so it's years later, she uh, moved to New York, I'm pretty sure, Chicago. I don't remember which one, which is where Will is now. And so she's very antisocial. She works in a lab all day long. I think she's like, she's a scientist of some sort. And so her brother and her dad kind of like have an intervention with her and it's like, hey, we think you need to go out more, have friends more. How about you call up Will? Will lives in the city you're living in now and hang out with him and y'all can be friends. And she's like, okay. Even though like she's always had a huge crush on him and still does. And so she's kind of like trying to put her feelings aside to become friends with somebody finally in the city. Um, and so Will decides to um, reluctantly <laughs> like chat with her and hang out with her for a little bit. And he realizes that he might love this woman um, who's his best friend's little sister. It's really cute and funny. I love their banter in here and it's a little forbidden in some aspects, but the brother doesn't really live there. So it's not that big of a deal. She talks about how she had a huge crush on him and he thinks it's just so cute. <laughs> Then I have It Ain't Me Babe by Tilly Cole. This is a motorcycle club romance. This is about Salome and Styx. And so when they were younger, I think maybe around 11 or 12, they met each other. So um, Styx was walking in the woods one day with his dad. He ended up getting separated from his dad and he comes across this chain link fence. And behind this chain link fence is this little girl who ends up being Salome crying. Um, and so he basically just sits in front of this fence and they don't even say a word, they just, look at each other and sit in each other's company until finally he goes away. I think they had a kiss or something like that. And that's the only thing that happened. And then he ran away. It's been years later and they still can't stop thinking about that person, you know? Um, and Salome, actually, the reason why she was crying is because she was just going through something very traumatic because she is from a cult. And this book is about her escaping that cult. So Salome ends up escaping this cult at the beginning um, and she ends up bloodied and broken in this alley. And this alley just so happens to be the alley behind the motorcycle club that Styx now owns. Styx in here also has a stutter so he talks in a sign um, and he is very self-conscious about his stutter except around Salome. I think it's just really cute how they always thought about each other even years later. I love that. <laughs> this book is pretty dark so watch out for trigger warnings but I honestly thought this was cute in some aspects as well. And the last book, a part of this recommendation video is The King's Spinster Bride by Ruby Dixon. This is an age gap romance where the woman is older and this is a fantasy romance. So, so Hala's dad is a king and he ends up kidnapping the prince to the Cyclops. Um, they're basically, humans who just have like one eye basically um and so he ends up kidnapping the king of the cyclops's son um who just happens to be like eight or nine and hala is like 16. um and she ends up protecting this boy while their uh city land is being taken over even though she, like she didn't have to like that's her enemy's son but she decides to protect him and then like her country ends up getting taken over by the guy um, and so she gets put in exile and it's years later um, the hero is now king of this land and he decides he needs a wife and he only wants princess Hala like that's all he wants even though she is way older than him he doesn't care he has always thought about her always had this huge crush on her and like he goes and tells her his plan and she's like what are you talking about you could have any woman you want you're gorgeous young amazing you want an old spinster and he's like I want you <laughs> Um, and so I just loved this. They have to go through some barbaric marriage rituals in here. And I just love the devotion that he's had to this woman the whole time that he's known her. It was beautiful. I loved it. So there you have it. Those are some romances that have the childhood crush trope in them. Please let me know if you have any recommendations for me and leave them in the comments down below. Also let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.